Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. Have you ever heard of SUDC, sudden unexplained death in children? No, most people haven't. The parents of two-year-old Vienna Carly Savino hadn't heard about it until it took her life in 2017, and both of them are doctors. But now they are on a mission to bring more attention to SUDC in hopes of someday explaining what so far has been unexplainable. Here's my interview with Vienna's mother, Dr. Denise Wunderler, founder of Team Vienna. Doctor, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. I think I speak for everyone that's watching this right now in offering condolences. Uh, I, it's such a heartbreaking story. I can't imagine going through something like that, um, but you're very strong and, and uh, you're on a mission. And so can you, can you tell us about that day? Yes, first of all, thank you, Larry, so much for having me and allowing me to, to tell Vienna's story. So November 12, 2017, my husband and I were planning to go to a wedding that day. And our little girl, Vienna, we have three kids. Our little girl, Vienna, woke up with a little low-grade fever and really nothing that we were too concerned about. Um, gave a little Tylenol, didn't really help her at all. Gave her then a little Motrin and she was jumping around having fun with her older brother and sister uh, within 15, 20 minutes or so. You know, she had a history of what's called febrile seizures. And so this is where... Um, you know, no other medical history except for this, but this is something that is supposed to be benign. You know, both my husband and I are both physicians and we have learned, you know, that this is very, very benign. We left for the wedding and, you know, we had a great time. Our kids had a great time with our babysitter. It was around 6.40 or so PM. My husband and I, you know, get to our car, driving home. Now we're on, on the parkway um, coming home and you now it's 7.02 PM where then we receive, you know, the horrible phone call. I'm driving my husband, um, who's an ER doc, I'm sports medicine. You know, we receive the phone call. He takes the phone call, of course, with because I was driving. And then, um, you know, our babysitter says, well, uh, you know, Vienna fell asleep watching TV in our family room. And she wanted to go over there to pick her up, to take her upstairs, to put her in her bed, you know? And she knows that she wasn't breathing. And so then, of course, you know, she dialed. 911. And so now my husband is talking to police and paramedics and really going through all the different algorithms that we as physicians go through, especially my husband being in emergency medicine, to try to save the person. I'm hearing, you know, words and terminology that no parent should ever hear when it's, you know, about their, their child. So then I hear my husband say, you know, no ROSC, capital R-O-S-C. And what that means is no return of spontaneous circulation. This is an ominous sign get to the, get to the hospital. So we're supposed to meet them. And we arrived first, the hospital, the ER was essentially quiet, quiet as I entered the ER, didn't know it was all for us. Well, for Vienna, didn't know it was all for us. Um, Vienna you know, eventually comes in about two minutes later. And so, and I really thought that, you know, she felt my touch. If she heard my voice, she would wake up and she would say, you know, mommy, and she would be fine. Because, you know, all parents, all, especially mommies, you know, we make everything better. And so they're continuing on with the resuscitation efforts. And then really it got, it was about, it was over an hour at this point. And, and they're essentially doing what's called a cardiac ultrasound to, to, to visually look for any type of cardiac activity, any type of pumping of that heart. And there was none. And of course, I'm not going to say, stop saving my girl. Of course not, you know. Um, and then the next thing I hear is time of death, 8.05. And then everything stops and that's it, you know? When did you start, I guess, immediately asking questions about what this could possibly be? Well, at, at that point, yeah, I mean, well, the whole time, you know, I mean, in, in my mind thinking, why, why did this even happen? You know, um, my first thought was that she choked on something. You know, it was a foggy time and we're confused and not really understanding at all what happened because remember we were gone all day. You know, we weren't there. We didn't talk to our babysitter yet, you know? Um, so, you know, we, we leave the ER and there's our girl. It was um, horrible. Like, like it almost, I mean, really even unexplainable, even though I've lived it, it's even really unexplainable and, and um, hard for me to even describe because now we're preparing for, you know, essentially a funeral. I mean, you know, she was fine that day. And then all of a sudden the next day, you know, now the cascade of events now start with funeral arrangements and everything after that. 
No, it's unimaginable. But when did you find out what happened? When did you get an, some kind of explanation? So it was, um, so the next day, and so she died on a Sunday night and now it was Monday. And then we, we spoke to the babysitter, you know, and, and of course she's just distraught obviously. And, you know, so, so she gave us a whole lowdown of what happened that day. And really even judging from my text from that day, I mean, Van had a great day, you know, cause the babysitter and I, we were in touch with each other throughout the day and everything pointed to everything is fine. And we had spoken about everything, but it was interesting because, um, our babysitter uh, had uh, participated in a fundraiser for something similar, like an unexplained death uh, of, of one of her teachers. So she actually heard of something that was similar. Um, and, and we as physicians never even heard of sudden unexplained death in childhood until we actually talked to um, the medical examiner that night when we were at the funeral home. Yeah, I've never heard of it either. This, this is the first I'm hearing of it. I guess that's the point of you speaking out. Absolutely. hundred percent. So now, you know, my husband and I are at the funeral home and then that's when we received the, um, the call from the medical examiner. And so then she went through and said, look, you know, I, I found nothing wrong with your sweet little girl. You took really good care of her. Um, and she said, you know, if everything turns out normal in terms of all the other testing that gets sent out, she said, this could be a case of what's called sudden unexplained death in childhood, SUDC. We said, well, we're two physicians here and we've never heard of this. What are you talking about? What is this sudden unexplained death in childhood? And then we taught, then we learned also in more detail later that it is a category of death in kids one to 18. So essentially in SIDS, SIDS are the babies. And we've heard of SIDS, of course, less than one year old. I think the whole world has heard of SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, where it's the babies less than one year old, where they die without an explanation. And they also have an autopsy, medical record review, death investigation. So honestly, we were fortunate that our medical examiner knew of SUDC. There's something about even the term itself that's so unfulfilling and scary because you, you don't know what to do. How do you protect your child from it? And right, and, and that's the problem. This is unpredictable. There is nothing that anybody can do at this point anyways to anticipate something like this to happen. Um, so you want further research then? You absolutely. Want that you want to be able to protect other children? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I want to know why Vienna died. I want to know why other kids now who are now my friends, why their kids died, and then to, to then be able to prevent this in kids in the future, of course, because you know this is obviously a very devastating situation that happens. I mean, most of these kids, like over half of the kids, have some type of you know fever, a little sniffles, some type of upper respiratory illness that really should be nothing. There really shouldn't be any type of an issue at all. But half of these kids who die, who eventually have, you know, this undetermined or SUDC label, they have some type of underlying, you know, little, little cold, but this little cold shouldn't, shouldn't cause their death. How, how can people help? Yeah. So, so um, uh, after Vienna died, uh, we, we did various um, types of uh, uh, projects and uh, events as Team Vienna. We joined a race because I want to do something active for her, you know, and, and honor her. And so we found a race and it was really, it was a race um, to, to support kids programs. So it really was also like a perfect fit, you know, right. in terms of um, you know, causes and things. So, um, so then we joined this race as Team Vienna. And then um, I thought really only, you know, maybe 20 of us would, sh would show up for Team Vienna. And, you know, we had t-shirts made, kind of had a design made with their handprint, actually last, their actual handprint on all of our t-shirts, which you can see here. Um, but uh, so we, we did this race and really almost 300 people signed up as Team Vienna. I was blown out of the water. It was unbelievable. And then the following year, you know, uh, I pretty much decided to, to do, um, to actually create a nonprofit. So we are a 501c3 nonprofit Team Vienna for SUDC awareness. And, you know, with being a physician, you know, I, I created my own medical lecture. And more recently, I'm working with medical schools directly across the country um, about getting SUDC into the into their actual curriculum for the medical schools. And then another SUDC mom, sadly, she lost her daughter, Vail. Um, but Candace Nelson and I, um, we then co-founded the SUDC Coalition. I, I have so much admiration and respect for people who take something devastating like this and, and turn it into something positive and try to save others, even through their grief. And I could hear it in your voice a couple of times that you're that you're still grieving and so the strength is admirable thank you so much for telling the story thank you so much for talking to us and if there's anything we can ever do please reach out we'll do it i appreciate that no thank you so much dr denise wanderler founder of team vienna still to come a new technology hub is born in new jersey 
We'll take you there next.